Steve here with another instructional video from Hydro Missions International. In this video, we'll be dealing with the question, where do I drill my well? This is an age-old question, and it's pretty complicated, so hang on. The first thing is to determine your local laws that govern what you can and cannot do. As you can see from our background, we are filming in suburbia, USA, and I am not allowed to drill a well on this property. It's hooked up to city water, city septic, and uh, as a result, I am not allowed to do that. Now, your laws may vary. They vary from state to state. They vary from city to city. We have a homestead in the country, and we are allowed to put wells on that property there. However, check with your local authorities. Now, this video primarily deals with drilling in third world countries. Much different setting, and that's pretty much what we're gonna talk about next. How to pick a spot to drill a well. What things to look for, what things to avoid. Now as we look at the lay of this land, we can see that it's sloped up toward the back. Contrary to popular belief, water does not always end up at the lowest point. Otherwise, we'd all be living at sea level and no one would be living in the mountains with water. The fact of the matter is that the water tends to follow the contours of the land. There's one simple piece of advice when considering where to drill your well. Ask the locals. They usually know where the water is, what kind of layers you're going to need to go through, and they're an invaluable resource. They know more about their land than you do. Drilling under the shadow of a tall tree does a couple of things. First of all, a large tree needs a lot of water to live, and it generally seeks it out. So there's got to be a water source somewhere in order for that tree to survive. We just need to find it. Secondly, the roots actually break up the subsoil. They can even break up rock and that kind of thing. I'm sure you've seen sidewalks uh, where the roots have cracked through the cement. Well, the same thing is true in the subsoil as well. So it makes it easier to hand auger. Finally though, and this is probably the biggest thing, is that drilling underneath the shadow of a tall tree at noon puts the finished well in the shade for when people actually need to use it. Remember, we do all of our projects in third world countries. Most of the time it's in the 1040 window, which is that belt around the equator that's very hot, sometimes 110 degrees, uh, full sun, all that kind of thing. So if we can put that well in the shade, it's gonna make it much more comfortable for the locals to access their water. I know what you're thinking. Trees have roots. Those roots are not always as big a problem as we might first think. Remember, we only need a six inch hole to put our tube in the ground. If we can find our way through the fingers of those roots, we're good to go. Another obstacle for drilling underneath a tree are the branches. Yes, they do get in the way a little bit when you're drilling, especially when you're pulling out large amounts of extension rod, but truthfully, it's a pretty minimal inconvenience considering the benefits. Is the area within 75 feet of a latrine or a sewer? If so, don't drill there. Any runoff from a nearby road? If so, the potential is pretty high for contamination and you wouldn't want to drill there. Is there any livestock or livestock pens within 50 feet of where you want to drill? If so, you may want to choose a different location. People often ask us about our position on water witching or divining. We do have a statement about that on our website, but the short story is that we don't advocate it. There are a lot of reasons. The bottom line though is that it's actually less than 50% accurate. In other words, you have a better chance flipping a coin. The other is that it does have negative spiritual connotations attached to it, and we just don't want to play into that. We would rather spend the time to teach people the geological evidences that indicate the possibility of water. Things like large trees, uh, vegetation, the lay of the land, maybe washed out riverbeds. All those things can be taught to the locals and it really improves their chances for future outreach to other villages. Ironically, our headquarters here at Hydro Missions International is about one of the worst places to drill by hand. We sit on a slab of rock and can only go about three feet before we run into it. So anyway, uh, we can't drill here. However, that's not to say that you can't hand drill in this neighborhood. In fact, if you go down to our neighbors, just about four blocks down the road, you can hand drill and you'll hit water at nine feet all day long. Now I say all that to stress the point that just because you might not be successful in one particular parcel of land, don't rule out an entire region to the potential of hand drilling. If you hit rock, keep moving over. Sometimes you may only have to move over a foot or two 
and you'll clear it. Other times you may be on a rock slab. But what I'm saying is that for village outreach, there's going to be some place within a village that you can drill by hand and get them water. The philosophy here at Hydro Missions is pretty simple. Can we make it one step better? If we can improve the quality of life for an individual or a family or a village and make it just a little bit better than when we first came, then that's a worthwhile project for us. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that the people are walking two miles to get their water, but they're getting it out of a mud hole. Well, if the only place that we can drill is still just 100 feet from that hole and they still have to walk two miles, at least they're walking to get clean water. Now, that's one step better, and that's worth it. This has been a very brief overview of some of the basic principles of determining where to put a well. If you're really serious about it, please visit our website. We have a lot of great information there. We'd also like to recommend another resource to you, Equip International. Equip is a training camp up in Marion, North Carolina, and it's a place where you can get first-hand experience and training in all things water-related. We went there and our associates go there as well. Thanks again for watching and please stay tuned for more instructional videos from Hydro Missions International.